we're going to get into bass and the harmonics of bass. Uh, I think it's a really, really fascinating subject. Harmonics as a whole, I think, is a really fascinating subject throughout music. Um, and we're going to start with bass and journey on from there. I'm going to give you a few examples from our own tracks and try to give you concepts and ideas that hopefully stimulate your brain a little bit, get you going and help you be creative and play with the sound and the music. So what do I have here in front of me apart from this cup of tea? What I have here is a simple FabFilter Pro-Q analyzing a square bass. So this is a bass note playing a low D sharp. And I put this here because I wanted to just showcase the bass as a... Um, I wanted to sh show how big bass is in the spectrum. Because my initial question is, what's so great about bass? Why is bass cool? There's a couple of reasons why bass is, uh, is amazing and why it's a great element in music, maybe the coolest element in music. One of the things is it's potentially full range. And uh, what I mean by that, it's potentially fully present across the entire spectrum. That's why I have this image here. This is pretty much the entire audible spectrum. So not, not a lot of other instruments command that amount of um, spectral space. So you could have a sound that ranges from, you know, 30 hertz all the way up to 20 kilohertz if you wanted to, the entire spectrum. Drums might do it with a transient. A transient might hit, you know, quite broadly across the spectrum, but nothing quite like bass. Uh, prolonged, continuous presence in that range. Um, another thing which is cool is that it's not only a audible range, it's also the physical range. Of course, sub-bass, you feel it more than you hear it. And that crossover is very interesting and very physical, and so this combination of hearing bass and feeling bass, hearing the harmonics of the bass, feeling the sub-bass, is, is very fascinating, I think. And then thirdly, what's great about bass is that the harmonics of bass sit in a great range for hearing. What I mean by that is, this might be kind of the area that you feel, and here you go into hearing range, and these are very musical harmonics. Now I'm going to get into that later, but if you would play a high synth, all of these harmonics would be even, you know, much further up the spectrum and there would be not a lot of playing you could do with that within a pleasant range. But ba so bass has a lot of harmonics in a range that you can do a lot with, which is this range. So this is a square wave, by the way. Um, and as you can see, there, the, the amount of harmonics is, you know, staggering because you can count them here, but you lose count pretty quickly here. And, by the time you get to here, it's so many that the analyzer can't display them all. So it's a ton of harmonics, a ton of harmonic content, a ton of clay, so to speak, you can start sculpting with. And if this were a saw wave, you would have even more harmonics in between here and here and here, because um, this is only the odd harmonics and a saw wave would have odd and even. Um, so, but I used the square so you could see it a little bit easier. Uh, paint a clearer picture. So now for my next slide, <laughs> harmonics. Let me tell you a story. Harmonics are a, a way for your brain to hear what note is being played. Uh, or let me phrase that another way, your brain reacts to harmonics and interprets them. It helps them, helps your brain interpret what note it's hearing. And what, what I mean by that is if you were to only hear this part of the bass, which is, you know, entirely possible if you put a bandpass filter on this, you'd still hear this pitch. You'd still be hearing that pitch. Um, and your brain analyzes these and gives your ear, the idea, or your brain, the idea that you're listening to a bass. This is also a great trick for mixing, because a lot of mixing engineers will actually cut a fair amount of the sub-bass 
and leave some of the harmonics or accentuate the harmonics so that your brain reconstructs the sub itself and makes it sound like there's a lot of sub while it actually isn't really there. So that's kind of the hearing part of the bass where and, and the feeling part of the bass would then be diminished a little bit. I try to always keep a fair amount of the actual physical bass in there. Um, so this analysis, what your brain does to the, to the, with the harmonics of the bass, is really fascinating. And I read this story in a book called This Is Your Brain on Music, which is a really cool book, about how this actually works in the brain. And apparently, when you hear a sound like this, like this bass sound, when you hear this, um, when you hear these harmonics, your brain will start to fire synapses at the same rate that this of this frequency. So this would be, I don't know, probably like 35 hertz or something, maybe a bit more. So if you hear this, your brain will start firing at 35 hertz in sync with the sound. And this is, for example, quite different to how you process visuals. And what I mean is that there's no place in your brain that they can point to that lights up when you see something that's red. That's different for everybody. If you see something that's red, a part of your brain will light up, but it's different for, for each individual. But for audio, you actually, everybody resonates the same way with these pitches. And the cool thing is that you don't even need the actual fundamental frequency, which is this guy here, that I talked about before, you don't actually even need it to have that syncing to, to resonate your brain at that range, at that frequency. And they tested it on animals, which, you know, something that you, I guess you do. This is why I have this little owl guy over here. Now what they did with these owls is they measured the rate at which their synapses were firing. So they could, re they could measure the, f the frequency. Then they put headphones on the owl, played the owl a bit of music, and removed the fundamental frequency from all of the note information. So they removed this guy, and they played some classical piece, but without the fundamental, only with harmonics. And the brain of the owl constructed the fundamental by itself, and they could measure it with the electrodes, and they could resynthesize the piece of music coming out of the owl because the owl had resynthesized the fundamental. So it doesn't only exist in humans, it also exists in animals, and I find it mind-blowing, to be honest. I think that's super cool. And this knowledge, and this, uh, this is part of why harmonics are so fascinating, because your brain basically starts calculating, like, oh, if this is 100 hertz, and that's 150, and this guy is 200, that's 50 hertz apart, I guess we're talking about a 50 hertz fundamental. Maybe. Oh, wait, there's 125 in between, too. Maybe it's 25 hertz. That's what your brain is doing, and you don't control it. There's no... Um, it's not a conscious thing that you do. But it's, ama it's amazing. And it's also amazing because it is a chord. You're listening to a massive chord. This is an enormous chord of sine waves. But your brain doesn't hear it like that it organizes it for you into hearing one bass sound. And that's incredible, I think, because if you were not able to organize it and optimize that listening experience, sound would just be incredibly confusing because there would be frequencies everywhere and you wouldn't really know where they belong. Your brain organizes it for you. I think that's really incredible, especially if you consider that these harmonics, that this harmonic series isn't necessarily all that harmonic um, because the intervals between the harmonics are very quickly not what we're used to in our modern tuning and chords and, you know, melody. It's a different type of tonal experience, but everybody just takes it for granted, even though there's 
things in there that will be considered would be considered greatly dissonant. Are you still with me? Because I mean, this I, I love this subject, and I guess I can ramble a little bit. 